Hello, everybody. Ian Maddox, Hitchcock Maddox Financial Partners, connecting with you on our Financial Planning Simplified video series. And we are moving further into a new year. It's 2021, about give or take mid-January, and uh, hope that uh, the year is beginning to shape up well for you. Uh, a couple of subjects that have been on my mind. I had a conversation with a new client uh, just the other day. And this is a subject that, that I've actually talked about before, but thought it was worthy to readdress and, and maybe flesh out a, a couple different details. And that is uh, saving for college. So uh, being here in Trustville, we have a lot of uh, 30, 40 something couples that seems to be drawing a lot of people here in our community. And that's just because of our schools. And so I have a tendency to be around folks of that age bracket. That's generally my age bracket. And so that conversation seems to come up a lot. And it's important, right? Uh, school after high school can be a lot of things. I think one of the things that we've all basically been beat over the head over is that you don't have to just go to a traditional four-year university. Totally understand that. Uh, there, there is opportunity in trade school. There's opportunities in a lot of different things. In fact, the trades are an area that continues to be a gap in our economy as you look forward. I'm glad to see that uh, many high schools, many school districts, ours here even locally, are addressing that with academies and things of that nature. So we don't want to wake up 20 or 30 years from now and not have carpenters, not have plumbers, not have you know people that are that are technical. Uh, and so, but 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 this conversation really is about what do we do to finance it? How do how do we pay for these things if if we as parents want to help our children launch their career? And in the conversation that I had with this this particular client was really the three areas, the three different types of accounts that I see people using to save for uh, secondary or whatever, next level education. The one that, that pops up a lot, and, and this is the one that the government has really crafted specifically for education, is the 529 plan. Every state, well I shouldn't say that, I don't know that, but many states uh, have their own 529, their proprietary program, and when I say that proprietary, all that really means is that a state will typically incentivize residents to use their plan and they will offset uh, contributions with some type of tax benefit, okay? Alabama does that exact thing. That's where we are. I know we may have viewers in other states. You may have a plan in your state that does something similar. The advantage of the 529 is that A, as I just mentioned, there's a tax advantage for contributions. Other people, you as a parent can contribute, grandparents can contribute. It's not tied to just one person being able to contribute to it. And there are, uh, again, tax benefits for those contributions. It also is tax deferred, okay, or actually tax qualified. So potentially, the monies that go in, if they're used eventually, whatever's in there, if it's used for qualified education expenses, I'm not gonna try to cover all of those, but suffice to say, it is more than just tuition. There's other things that you can use the money for, and it doesn't even have to just be college. Uh, there are qualifying expenses that could happen in high school. So there's a whole list of them that the state has. You can look at that um, you know, on your time. You can reach out to us. It, it, we can kind of point those out to you. But if you use that for that, there's no taxation whatsoever. So tax benefit on the front end, uh, tax qualified. In other words, you could potentially just pay nothing on those monies. You put them in. If they're used for education, you're good to go. Now, some people will say, well, I want to save for my child or my grandchild or my niece or my nephew, uh, but I don't know for certain what their educational future looks like. Is there a more flexible way that I can save that allows the money to be used some different way in case they don't go the traditional four-year route or, you know, whatever, whatever the circumstance is? And yes, uh, some of the more creative options are to use what's called a Roth IRA. That is really an individual IRA, but it has a different tax treatment. Uh, the monies that go into it are after tax, then they grow tax deferred, and monies that come out are potentially tax free. The power of this is that what you put into the account can be pulled back out. So you could potentially, a person, a, a, a contributor to a Roth, could potentially pull what's called basis, right, what they've put in out, and use that for for uh, college expenses before they reach 59 and a half. Many uh, parents will have college age students or after high school age students before they turn 59 and a half. So the ability to access some money before that is excellent. And, and, and the benefit here is that if you don't use it for that, it's still in your name and can be used for retirement purposes. So a lot of flexibility. The last option that I will mention here 
is what's called a UTMA account or UTMA account. And this is truly just a taxable account that is open for the benefit of a minor and what's simple terms managed by someone that's, <laughs> that's an adult, right? And those, those funds are completely fluid, completely flexible. Now, there is no tax advantage per se in the sense that you're going to pay taxes along the way. If you buy or sell, there's transactions that create capital gains. You pay taxes, interest, dividends, you're going to pay taxes. But uh, there, there is some exceptions to that called the kitty tax. This video, I don't want to get into the weeds on that, but there could be some reduced taxation depending on how much growth there is in the account. But the beauty there is that it is completely flexible, can be used for whatever. One thing to take note is that on a UTMA account, every state has what's called the age of majority for trust accounts. And in Alabama, now, you have to check your own state if you're watching this, not where we are, it is 21. So at 21, those UTMA funds have to transfer legally, right, by law, from uh, being controlled by the person that was funding it or the, you know, the adult to, to the new adult, right, the person that is now age of majority, and those assets become theirs free and clear to do whatever they want with them. So those are kind of the three ideas. Depending on your situation, there's pros and cons to each. If we can be of help, clarify for you and your specific situation, you can also check with your advisor, tax professional, attorney, whatever. Uh, in any case, we're happy to help. Reach out, Ian Maddox, till next time, HMFP.